and welcome back. This is Baller Scooper with more Let's Play Tales of Monkey Island. I'm joined, as always, by the now free Guybrush Threepwood. When we last left off, we got exonerated from all charges, thanks primarily to LeChuck, who is now in jail and kind of ratted out the voodoo lady. Let's talk to LeChuck and see what he has to say about what just happened. LeChuck! Guybrush! Apparently we're friends now. I would have bet my good hand I'd never say this, but thank you. For what? I've caused you nothing but despair. For taking the fall back there, and for exposing the voodoo lady. I don't know what to make of any of it, but now I can focus on saving Elaine and dealing with the pox. It is the very least I could do. But be careful, Guybrush. I'm always careful. This from the guy who proposed to his wife with the cursed engagement ring you stole from my hold? Is that a dig? Is the evil demon pirate LeChuck developing a sense of humor? He does have this a is point. weird. And it still is weird. You leave the humor to me. Really? Thanks again. You don't need to thank me, my friend. I merely spoke the truth. They say that truth is the greatest barnacle scrubber you know. Yes. The best cure is sunshine. Unless you're on antibiotics, in which case you need to stay out of the sunshine. Where have you been? I thought you were with Elaine. Well... After leaving Spinner K, Elaine and I set out to finish releasing all those monkeys I'd captured. After we were finished releasing the last of them, Elaine caught wind of your trial, went into a poxed rage, seized a passing clam schooner, and made a beeline for Flotsam Island. That's my girl. Needless to say, I took my own vessel and headed after her. But in the middle of the night, my ship was sunk by a rogue wave. I was washed up on an island of cannibals, from whom I deftly escaped using many of the self-same skills you taught me back on the Jerkbait Islands. You know, it's amazing how easily man-eating tribes can be reasoned with. Knowing I needed to get here more than ever, I lashed together a few bits of cannibal leftovers and warthog sinew to build a makeshift raft. Unfortunately, that was soon eaten by the sharks. Oh no! So I swam. I swam as fast as I could for three days. And arrived just in time to save me from the gallows. Nicely done, buddy. This is just so weird for me. Have you seen Elaine, though? Have you seen Elaine? No. Not since she left me in a poxed rage. She's been doing a lot of that lately. Yeah, she tends to do that. So, did you really do that swimming that you said you did? Kudos to your swim instructor. I was fueled by the fire of our budding friendship. This is only making things weirder for me. So, tell me again about the voodoo lady's explosive diary? Apparently she's been behind everything. I can't believe the voodoo lady has been pulling your ghostly slash demonic strings all these years. It came as a shock to me as well. But her diary spells it all out. You, me, Elaine, we're all part of the voodoo lady's malevolent plans. Malevolence is in the eye of the beholder, Guybrush Treepwood. I'm the beholder. I know this is difficult to understand, but things are not as they seem. And you're malevolent. No, things seem remarkably convoluted, which is what I've come to expect from you. Yeah, this I've is... always had your best interests at heart. Maybe. Well, what about my interests? Without your meddling, I could have lived a normal, happy pirate's life. There's no such thing. Ah, the destiny of LeChuck has never been normal. Or happy, probably. So she was behind everything. Well, how about the mountain of ice on the roller coaster of the dam? She was behind that? Especially that. Oh, that was part of her plan from the beginning. So yeah, the sponge, it sucks, apparently. It saved me, but then just me. I risked life, limb, and manatee to get La Esponja Grande, and it's a puny, worthless lump. What? Soak up the gargantuan wonder that is La Esponja Grande. That is La Esponja Grande? But wasn't it supposed to hold infinite amounts of voodoo? I know. What a crock. The size of the sponge is meaningless. It is what you do with it that matters. What are you trying to say? Oh, yeah? yeah? Well, well, you, you fight, fight like, like a... a uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's still small. The sponge is still small. Most unfortunate. Apparently that's all he has to say about that. So you haven't seen Elaine, then? I'm afraid not. She's quite a handful. Oh, I know. You're telling me. All those thwarted attempts to marry her might have been blessings in disguise, huh? Seriously? 
are are we riffing on a, a, a lane in order to be nice to LeChuck? I don't like where this is going. I'm done here. Sit tight, buddy. Once I save a lane, you're next. Don't worry about me. So you don't actually need to talk to LeChuck, at least not right now. Uh, what we do need to do is talk to the voodoo lady. Hey, you. Hello, Treepwood. Yeah, it sucks because it doesn't suck. It blows. You sent me on a wild albatross chase for La Esponja Grande and promised me it would cure the pox. But after fending off sexually ambiguous merpeople, a giant manatee, and your crazy ex-boyfriend, what do I get for my trouble? This sorry excuse for a kitchen sponge. La Esponja. Ah, I noticed you strategically left out the Grande from this worthless piece of junk. Once it cured my piddly leftover pox, it didn't have enough mojo left to cure Elaine. It's not worthless. It is merely young. It must be brought to maturity in order to reach its voodoo-absorbing potential. Brought to maturity? How am I supposed to do that? Give it a talk about the sponge birds and sponge bees? Gross. Like all infants, La Esponja needs nourishment. It must be fed six special voodoo courses to bring it to adult size. What sort of meal is that? A feast for the senses. The menu, Treepwood. Take it and served a sponge a meal unlike any other. And then? It will grow. Hey, neat. There's a map of the Flotsam Jungle on the cover. No more listening to bees and birds and boars for this mighty pirate. Hooray, we got the map. Well, it's not really a map. I'm not going to use it as a map. I'm going to use it as a menu. Because once you unfold it, it is a menu feast for the senses, a voodoo feast in six courses guaranteed to embiggen the smallest beastie. Once completed in order, your wee beastie will grow to maturity. Substitutions encouraged. So, uh, here are the six courses through all six senses, of course. Uh, the first course, put on a napkin. That's a sight, a garish cloth, grotesquely bright. I think I have something in mind for that, but it's going to be kind of convoluted in order to get that. And then it goes through smell and taste and sixth sense, uh, touch, and then here. But of course, we'll just be starting with the first course for now. Go ahead and put that away and yell at you some more. This is purely for me. Hey, you, again. Again. Hello, Treepwood. You've been lying to me about the Chuck all these years. My ways are my own, Guybrush, but rest assured I have never lied to you. Well, you refuse to You're give me the truth? right now! All this time, I thought LeChuck was an inhuman monster. Actually, he was an inhuman monster, but only because you made him that way. Yeah, this is all Did your fault. I, or was I merely playing my role in a much larger play? Who's larger Stop than you? Stop trying to confuse me. That's We're tired of being enough. puppets in your chess game. This is no game, Treepwood. Uh, yeah, I'll never trust you again, even though I'm totally going to do what's on the menu here. You corrupted LeChuck and sent him out to torment me in a lane for years. I'll never trust you again. I don't require your trust, Treepwood. Only your heroism. What was that supposed to mean? I'm married now, you know. You've been lying to me about oh. my ways. Right. You're we, lying right now. We've gone through all this. Did I? Stop. This is... Right, so... About this feast for the senses. About this feast for the senses? What would you like to know? Oh, apparently yeah, I have all of them. I, I don't want to ask about all of them. We'll just ask about this first one right now, and then we'll move on. The first course in the feast for the senses. The napkin. What's up with that? The table must be set with an eye-catching napkin to entice the sponge's hunger. So we will find that eventually. All right, enough about the feast for now. So now we do need to grow our sponge. This all sounds so wrong to me. I met Coronado de Cava. Lovely man. My beloved. How was he? Crazy. Man. Bipolar. Life ruined. Just another pawn sacrificed in your theater of the damned. I never meant to cause him harm. But you did. Sure you did. He's crazy now because of you. Yeah, you were manipulating him. He's now crazy, probably still inside of manatee somewhere. Come on, admit it. You were manipulating Coronado. Coronado was never touched by my voodoo, even though he sometimes begged to be. Uh, I'm not sure we're talking about the same thing anymore, so I'll just shut up. 
Guybrush's one weakness. He's looking at the voodoo lady sexually. Have you seen Elaine? Have you seen Elaine? Of course, even if you have, I won't believe you. So whether I have or have not does not matter. That's true. Well, if you do, tell the Chuck and then have him tell me. I'm not sure what that will solve. So, when I was with Dakava, you might have felt something strange happen. Ah, you are no doubt alluding to your brief possession of my physical form. Ha! How did it feel to be the Manipulate Ted instead of the Manipulate Tor for once? It was curiously liberating. You're weird. You're slow to catch on to that one. Yeah, try not to get executed before I cure Elaine. As you wish. So we are done with the Voodoo Lady for the time being. I do have the menu, which is what I needed. What was that? Huh. Something sure shoved a short sword up his aft sail. That sounds painful. We will ignore that for the time being. We need to head back out to the jungle. And we need to head for... There it is. That was this one. The creepy shack. Which doesn't look so creepy from here. Yeah, we don't need the map in order to get to the creepy shack. We've already been there, so it's really easy to get back. We have been to a lot of locations around here. What in the name of Bluebeard's hair dye? Hey, hey, hey no poaching. I have called dips. I think I may be lost. Shouldn't there be a creepy voodoo shack right about there? There was. Until they came to arrest that pox-spreading voodoo lady. What happened? First came the flames. Poor Senor Nipperkin went up like St. Elmo's fire. Then she emerged from the conflagration, mumbling ancient curses with every regal step. I never forget the baleful stare she fixed me with as she was left well. A look condemning me to a lifetime of suffering, shame, and regret. Okay. And if that wasn't bad enough, I, I haven't found one bit of cool voodoo stuff in the wreckage. Come on! I feel so bad for Mob you. Mob justice can be so unfair. Especially for collectors, apparently. So, what we have is uh, the shaft remains. We'll look at that first. Even when it's burned to the ground, the voodoo lady's shack is still creepy. I don't see it. It's not that creepy to me. Maybe some of this stuff, but this is all just shack remains. This is the only thing that's kind of strange or stands out, apparently. What a shame. That rug really tied the shack together. Thanks, dude. But these moths seemingly are important. Huh. Looks like the light of the shack's embers has attracted a swarm of jungle moths. That probably explains what happened to the voodoo lady's rug. Ah, that would explain to it. I thought somebody had peed on it, but that might be something else. What we need to do is supply them with our own light, like a leg lamp. Whoa! Uh-oh. Hmm. Looks like these finicky moths won't eat a jacket that's encrusted with bacon grease, fish water, and manatee guts. Lucky me. Yeah. Lucky you. Uh, I do believe that is it around here, so... We'll just head back to the jungle entrance. And go. Every time it changes screens, I have to, like, reset the buttons. It's no longer acknowledging that I want him to run. But now that we do have moths with us, I know it's a little convoluted, but trust me, I know what I'm doing. We can head over and once again, it resets the buttons. We can talk to Stan, everybody's favorite uh, something. Stan, three wood. No hard feelings over all those various civil and criminal charges. Water under the bridge. Great. A bridge with a fast talking shyster slash salesman dangling from it. Let's talk a bit about what you're doing around here. Still trying to make a buck on my recently cleared name? Nah, I sold all that junk to that Dooro sap. I've moved on to the next trial of the century. Flotsam Island versus LeChuck and the Voodoo Lady. So how are sales going for that? Yeah, how are sales going now? Great! People can't get enough of the Voodoo Lady's murky, moral ambiguity, mysterious, unexplored backstory, and her ample... La 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 la, I'm not listening, la la la... Voodoo charms. And as for the Chuck, well, let's just say the Lady Pirates love, love, love a tale of redemption. The whole bad boy made good angle. Ah, uh, 
Yeah, to all lady pirates out there, have I mentioned that I used to be a really bad boy, but I've been redeemed somehow? Yeah, I'm not buying it either. Uh, so, have they been put on trial? Have the Voodoo Lady and LeChuck been put on trial yet? Have they? It's the trial of the century! E, e, e. Part Wait, two. I thought I was the trial of the century! E, 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 e. Yesterday's news, Threepwood. So, you're prosecuting them? So, what kind of case are you building against LeChuck and the Voodoo Lady? Oh, I'm not prosecuting them. I'm defending them. What? Why? Why do I do anything, Threepwood? Money, pieces of eight, filthy lucre. That voodoo lady babe is loaded. Funny thing, though, she only let me take the case if I defend LeChuck, too. Funny like a peg leg. How funny is a peg leg? But you see, Guybrush, if you were attracted to the voodoo lady, we could be on easy streak now. Instead, you're on uh, about Elaine and possibly Morgan. Where is Morgan? So, uh, it's very important here. Gonna have your jacket. It seems to fit the description of this napkin that I need to give my sponge. I don't suppose you'd be willing to sell me your eye-bending jacket. Give up my jacket? it would be like Samson getting a buzz cut, or King Arthur losing Excalibur, or Bluebeard dying himself blonde. Uh huh? Without my jacket, my salesman Mojo would wither away faster than a hothouse orchid in a pizza oven. So, that's a maybe? What's a hothouse orchid? And why are you putting it in a pizza oven? 